Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to have some time to address these questions and comments. Today's speaker is Dr. Amani Lusekelo, who is a senior lecturer at Dar es Salaam University College of Education. He holds a PhD in African Languages and Literature from the University of Botswana. And his areas of research include morphology and syntax of Swahili and other Bantu varieties, and also language context and anthropological linguistics of non-Bantu languages of Tanzania. Um, today, he'll be presenting his talk, Human Contact and Societal Changes, the case of personal names of Hatsabe. I'm going to talk about the human contact and the societal change in, in Tanzania. And I focus on the personal names of the Hadza. I prefer the plural one, Hadzabe. And my talk is divided into five kind of uh, sections. I'll begin with the purpose of my presentation. I'll talk a little bit with my engagement with the Hadzabe community, mainly in Yaeda Chini. Survey briefly uh, resources on the human contact and the life of the Hadza. Uh, I'll talk about the Hadza today as they are, perhaps from 2013 up to 2019, maybe, or 2018. And then I'll talk about a lot about names of the Hadza, which now are have posed a lot of challenges to my data and to my analysis. And maybe I'll draw a conclusion there. I'll begin with the purpose of the, my talk today. The Hadza, which are well known as an, a highly endangered language in Tanzania, have adopted a number of foreign names. And these names, as I'll be talking, they are either coming from communities which are adjacent to the Hadza in northwestern Tanzania, around lake areas, or they might come from a, a little bit higher community. And, and in Tanzania, it will be the Swahili speaking community. Or in, in some point or so, they may come beyond that. And in the way, uh, the purpose of this presentation is to see how the Hadza tend to identify themselves as a speech community, as a social community, which is surrounded, I would say, surrounded by the Nailotic speaking community, particularly the Datoga um, in Yaeda Chin, the Nyisanzu speaking community, which are Bantu. Mm, and the uh, Afroasiatic, the Kushatic Iraq. And mm, uh, in the upper layer, it will be now the Swahili speaking people, which they, uh, they had to use uh, when I was talking to them, call them Waswahili. And their names, I would say they have mm, lost to be indigenous, I would say, the names they have collected. Maybe I, I, I'm sure there will be more data to, to be gathered and further analysis to be done. But the names they have, they have become, over a period of time, I think now they have become more foreign than being indigenous to the Hadza. And I'm focusing my talk on, based on the, a previous publication I have made on the Hadza Society of Tanzania where I studied their contacts, their sociolinguistics, and the onomastics. And by then I had a small project with the, uh, the African Humanities Program, and I stayed in the University of Ibadan to write this book. And of course, it was published there in, in Ibadan, Nigeria. And previously, I had written a small um, book chapter, um, which is published in the, uh, the Endangered Language Foundation, 
which gave me a, a, a very small funding to study the names of the Hadza. And this is the beginning point because the publication contains a number of names which are not Hadza, but they are used by the Hadza people. So my 2014 analysis is um, giving me a headache in the sense that when I revisit the data, I realize that most of the names are not Hadza. I think I didn't collect proper information of the Hadza. But in fact, they are names used by the Hadza. But a detailed reanalysis of the data tells me that they are not Hadza. This has to do, uh, to me, it has a lot of sense towards understanding the contact of the people around, around Lake Ayers and the outcome of the contact for, for a smaller community like the Hadza. This one is very essential. And in the book I'm using, I have such names as Nyanzobe, which is famous. It's, it's, it's a famous name and um, I'm happy I met her. And Bagayo is an elder person in Domanga. They, um, by blood, they are related. Nyanzobe and Bagayo, they are related. And some other, Hapali is from Endamaga. Hotin is from Endamaga. Macau from Gorofan and Shakwa from Gorofan. Siguas. Macau again, Nange, Katambuga from Mongoamono, Mungu, Itongo from Yedachin, Mleko from Yedachin, and Yed and Gudo. I met all these, and now I have come to realize that these names, some of these names, are not typically Hadza. I'll talk about that. Mm, and when I went to Yaeda Chin in 20, uh, 2013, I lived with Mze Naftali. Of course, I have come to know that his name is Naftali Mandege. He was involved in the ward administration. He speaks English. He stayed in the UK sometime in the 60s or 70s. So he's a representative of the Hadza, but he's a half Hadza. Uh, his mother is Hadza. His father is in Isanzu. I know Magadula, I, lived, uh, I didn't live with him, but I know him, and I know Richard Barlow, who is of late now. Yeah. Yeah. He passed, and Richard Barlow is a young brother of um, Naftali Mandege, but Richard Barlow and Naftali Mandege, they share their father, mm, but they have, or they share their mother, but they are from different mm, mm, fathers. But Richard Barlow had been a typical Hadza. His father and uh, mm, mm, his mother are were Hadza. And uh, as far as I tried to learn about this Hadza society, I have come, of recent, I have come to realize that I didn't go into details as required. And it is the personal names of the Hadza that now gives me a challenge to, to redo the analysis of the names. And uh, most of the Names that will be going to now uh, were obtained in the Aida Chini in 2013, 2014. That's when I obtained the data and uh, analyzed in 2015 and published a book. If I were to get time, I would go and redo. <laughs> and um, technically, since I want to talk about, uh, I'm talking about language contact and the outcome of the contact in the Rift Valley. Mm, we will assume, let me assume now, on the basis of personal names, that the Hadza are a separate community. And of course, they are separate, having, uh, they speak uh, uh, a Greek language. They are a Khoisan or isolate, now it's isolate, but they, they speak a Greek language similar to Khoisan uh, languages. And they are hunter gatherers. Technically, I'm basing on Woodburn, 1970 who stayed there longer before independence of Tanzania. So they typically hunt and gather fruits. And if I am to quote Frank Mallow, and he would say, men and boys 
hunt with bows and arrows. And the women and the girls gather seeds, pick berries, and dig edible roots, which is now a typical uh, foraging lifestyle. So I assume that they are a foraging community with a, a kind of identity of their own. And since it's a community, I assume there will be an opportunity for members of the community to be identified by names. Yeah, that is, the, that is my premise. The Hadza might be identifying one another using personal names. Mm -hmm. Before I go to the population, I will also want to say something about names in African communities. And I have one or two publications on names of the Nyakusa, which is the community I come from. And I have another one of the Machame. I and my colleague did the research on the Machame, and we had a publication on the names of the Machame. If I combine the two, uh, I realized that African communities are very good at assigning names to their siblings, assigning names to their children on the basis of the vegetation in the neighborhood, the landscape in the neighborhood, mm, rivers or other water bodies if they are in the neighborhood, or sometimes names are obtained from ancestors. So they're um, kind of inherited from uh, four parents. Or in several other cases, um, some local celebrities or politicians will also impose names in the community. So I assume the Hadza has, has that uh, 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 um, character as well, because it's an African community. But now studying the names of the Hadza is, is, is a little bit tricky. And uh, given the background that the Hadza are fewer in number, uh, of course, statistics, I don't know statistics, how they stand today. But in the oldest publications, they are talking of a thousand people. In the language of Tanzania project, uh, Henry Mzali and Joseph Atulge Marira, they are talking of six thousand plus or somewhere. When I was talking to the Hadza themselves, they are mentioning up to 3,000 plus. When you do estimation, you will realize that there may be somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000. Since we have a lot of research, we will see the outcome. Now, such a small community, such a small community of 1,000 or 2,000 people, they might be identifying themselves using their personal names. But we know that the Hadza had been in contact with a lot of people from a, a number of uh, 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 language uh, uh, affiliations. And uh, if we go to Yaeda Chini now, we will realize that the Hadza had been in contact with the Datoga who live in a place within the Yaeda, uh, uh, it's, it's a marshland, I would say. In the 90s, it was, uh, uh, it was a lake-like. I was told there were even fish. If you read Woodburn, it was a lake-like in the 1970s, but now it's dry and it's called Mbugani. And so the Hadza and the Datoga come into contact regularly in Yedachini. You also, on the one hand, on the other hand, you have the Nisanzu, who are a band speaking community. They have also settled in the uh, uh, Yedachin. And we have the Iraq, the Kushatik Iraq. They also live in Yedachin. And these are larger communities. The Hadza, uh, oh, sorry, the Datog, Nisanzu, and Iraq are. Uh, bigger communities. And if I am to borrow ideas from Derek Nas, a huge community, a large community will always impact on a smaller community. So I assume the Datoga, Iraq, and the Nisanzu are 
creating a lot of pressure on Hadza. And this, I think this is evident in the names of the Hadza people. Now I'll begin talking about what I found in Yaedachini. And the first thing which I realized is uh, obvious in the Yaedachini, it's no longer, Yaedachini is no longer a home of the Hadza. In the, in the division of the Hadza, Yaedachini, I think, is, a, is a, it's called Sipunga. Yeah, so it's a community of this uh, of the Spunganebe, uh, which is uh, one group of the Hadza uh, who inhabit uh, in Yedachin. Mm, if you go to Domanga, which is an area which I had also collected some data, that is Tlika, and the, they will call it Tlikanebe, Tlikanebe, mm, which is also an, another variety of the Hadza. Uh, Yaedachin is no longer a Hadza mm, 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 settlement because uh, in 2013, 2014, I could identify six families um, uh, with a total of 25 people who are a typical uh, Hadza uh, in the entire of Yaedachin village. So the, the community have shrunk down but Mongo Amono has a largest community of the Hadza. But we cannot avoid the impact of animal keepers and farmers who come in, wherever you have uh, assistance, they come in. So Nyeda Chin and Mongo Amono, there is a dispensary, there are schools, there, are, there is a primary school and a secondary school. They both bring in people from other communities. And of course, we have a farmland. The outcome is that you have a lot of contact in Yaedachini. Mm, I'm showing now, I want to show one or two slides of photographs. Mm, I, take, I, 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 I have taken in Yaedachini. First is a farmland. A harvested farmland, uh, and, and three typical herds are young men, the boys. Yeah, they hunt with arrows, and they, mm, they go with their parent, their fathers, boys. And of course, these are school boys. I can't tell you that they ran away from school, but they did. This is Domanga photograph of a, a hut in Domanga. This is the home of Bagayu. Uh, uh, the other one is, uh, this is Mongo Amono. And the names of a few of these are used. We have Katambuka and Mzenange in, in the mid. These are the names, are, their names are used. That is Mongo Amono. Oh, that is Mze Bagayu and me. Uh, that is Yeda Chini. But now he changed, he built another uh, compound and now he moved out of this place. I met him in 2019, this year, he moved out of this compound. Um, the settlement, I have talked about that. They are number and they are still 3,000. I have talked about that. The Iraq, there are so many. Um, I have talked about that. Now I should begin the contact. I will begin my talk with uh, uh, someone who I had a, 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 his photo on the, on the cover of my book, The Society of Tanzania. Mze Magadla, who is elderly and he is a typical Hadza. But when I, I went to meet them with Mongo Amono, he had that dress. He had the traditional Hadza, uh, uh, something on his head, but uh, the rest, 
the shirt, a t-shirt, and the sweater, and the short, they are not hard, typically Hadza. Katambuga is famous, he's, he's foreign, but if you, his name is Magadla. And they don't think Magadla is, uh, is a Hadza name. Uh, this is Nyanjobe. He's related to Mzebagayu. Is a sister to Bakayu. Yeah. Uh, this is Mlekwa. Can you imagine? He's still keeping his traditions as a hunter and uh, a forager. But his name is Mlekwa, and Mlekwa is not typically a Hadza name. And these are young, uh, yeah young Hadza children. Personal names of the Hadza. This is the first list I would uh, begin with. So uh, in some of the photos I showed um, Nyanzobe um, and Bagayu, who are typically um, Hadza from both mother and father. But a name like Nyanzobe and Bagayu, they are indeed you can't draw a boundary that they are typically Hadza. Maybe Hapali and Hotindi and Macau and Shakwa, which are names of vegetation. So I will assume that names of vegetation are central in the naming system of the Hadza. And they have a good example of the, the name Shakwa which is a tree um, which is used to produce a poison which they can put on the arrows or um, which are used for hunting. So if Shakwa is the uh, Hadza name, that would be a typical Hadza name. But a name like Sigwas, which appears in some historical uh, narrations of the Hadza, it might be Hadza as well, but it might not be Hadza. Mm, I'm very sure of the name like Mlekwa, which is typically a, a, a Sukuma or it's a Bantu name, and it's common in the Bantu community. And the name Katambuga is a type of shoes, which is also a, a typical Kiswahili name. From such a list, you may assume that these first names of the Hadza are Partially Hadza, partially not Hadza. If I give you another list with names like Magandula, Magandula cannot be a Hadza name. It's a Skuma name. Maybe Endeko, but now you have to rethink of the impact of Datoga. To me, Endeko looks like Datoga. Salibog, uh, that is another famous name, which is available in the narrations of the origin of the Hadza. Maybe it means to be Hadza. But the name like Malapa, Mayala, Maloba, Mahaza, Masela, those are not Hadza. But when I was analyzing in, in 2015, towards the publication of this book, they looked like family names. And that I should speak with some uh, uh, focus in here. If the family names of the Hadza communities appear to have come from communities adjacent to them, they are either Sukuma um, or Ihanzu, that indicates that the identity through family names amongst the Hadza. It's not quite an important thing, say to the, so to say. Like for me, with Mnyakusa, if I were to talk about my family name, I would produce a name which is typically of Mnyakusa origin. Mm. But if the family names of the Hadza come from another community, there we have something to rethink about the social identity of the Hadza on the one hand, and again, on the mechanisms to collect data, typical Hadza data, 
which is a subject matter which I will also uh, underscore in my talk. So I also have other names like Madulu or Matulu, Mwasad, which I know for sure they are Sukuma or Nisanzu, but typically Madulu and Mwasadi, they are Sukuma names. Ba Bala is a Sukuma name. Sahitot, which is a name used by a head of the family in, in Endamaga. And you know the herds are keep on moving from one community to the other. If Saitot is used, but Saitot is a typical Maasai name. Yeah, so um, you can imagine how the, um, they obtain names from elsewhere. And the newer names like Nyerere, Safari, or Kampala, um, they are of foreign origin. Um, but they are affiliated with people who are elderly and who could become parents. And so we have a problem with the identity through names. In the Tanzanian communities, identities could be obtained through names, but with these names, uh, we, ha we still have a problem. I, I have two things I want to talk on this slide, on the basis of the, uh, the names. We assume uh, in Tanzania, as far as onomastics is concerned, mm, family names uh, will be names which are inherited from the ancestors, I would say, the forefathers of the community. Now, if I obtain a name which is of Maasai origin, the assumption I'm making here is that at a point, the Hadza have gone to a stage of affiliating themselves with the Maasai. But we can't avoid the um, reality that the Maasai uh, had been warriors since then. And they had penetrated into the, um, particularly in, 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 um, in Mangola, they penetrated into the um, Hadza speaking community. And being warriors, I would assume that they also um, have put some pressure on the Hadza. And so in the way the Hadza readjusted to fit into the, I would say the demands or the requirements of the Maasai uh, at some point. And one of the requirement is to switch, to change a name to the name of the Maasai. Or, we are aware that in the northwestern parts, the Skuma people are it's a large community, and they are farmers, and now they keep animals as well. I, I assume they also, at a point or so, have pushed themselves into the Maasai community, uh, into the Hadza community, particularly in, in areas towards Meatu, Meatu district, which is in, on the other side of Lake, uh, Lake Ayas. And since the Skuma, a, a large community, they had also pressurized the Hadza to the extent that the Hadza had borrowed a number of names from the Skuma. And I can recall Bala. Bala is um, also used by many researchers in, amongst the Hadza. But the name Bala is a common name amongst the, the uh, uh, Skuma. Or of recent now, we have newer names getting into the Hadza. And these names uh, will be associated with Kiswahili or the, for Tanzania, it's, it's a community which is larger. You speak Kiswahili, you come from a little bit higher community. That is the situation in Tanzania, having Kiswahili as the, national language and medium of instruction. So it's associated with a little bit higher um, status. So in, of course I have the name like Nyerere and the other names of the, uh, of the Hadza. Um, so in a way, you can't draw a boundary. You say, so and so is a name of the Hadza. That is what uh, have made me, that's what they, the data I analyzed by then 
and it posed a lot of um, challenges to me when I revisit the names of the Hadza. Mm -hmm. I think I should draw a conclusion now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since data was gathered in 2013 and 2014, and by then I generalized that names like Saitot or names like Nange or names like Bagayu were Hadza. Now, after studying names of other communities, say I have a student who surveyed names of four ethnic communities in Tanzania, Iraq, Korea, Sukuma, and Maasai. Now I have come to realize that most of the names which I collected in 2013-2014 were not typically representing the Hadza community. And of course, these had been mentioned by other researchers who wrote to me and saying, no, those names, not all names are of uh, Hadza by origin. And so the assumption I had heard about the identity of the Hadza is a smaller community which maintains its culture they maintain the hunting and gathering activities. The assumption I had now had to be reformulated, I would say. Now I have come to a conclusion that the Hadza have some form of fluctuating identities, identities which change depending on the circumstances at point, and the circumstances are pushed they are, these are forces from external pressure from other Tanzanian communities, particularly for now, I would say the pressure that the Iraq, the Datoga, the Nisanzu are exerting on the Hadza, those cannot mm, mm, be ignored when you look into the identity of the Hadza based on the personal names. And if I were to redo, I would think of the methodology for gathering information required for drawing better conclusions on the personal names of the Hadza and the ethnic affiliation of the Hadza and some form of tracking the history of an individual family from, say, from someone says at a given point, say a hundred years ago, if you track the history of a single family, you may end up obtaining different family names at a point or so, depending on where the community was. If the community lived in the Edachini, it would be likely to obtain names from the Toga and the Iraq. If it lived in the western parts of Lake Eas, it is likely to obtain names from the band speaking community, maybe the Skuma and the Nisanzu or Niramba. Or if you are uh, dealing with the Hadza people who are surrounded by Kiswahili speaking people, you are likely to obtain Kiswahili names as well. I think I will stop there. Okay, thank you, Amani, for your presentation. Um, so we're now going to the question and answer section. Um, so anyone who has a question or a comment, please leave it in the Zoom group chat, uh, and I will read them out and make sure to address them. Uh, to give everyone some time to write, I'm going to start with a question of my own. Um, so I'm quite interested um, to see if there's any uh, Western influence at this point, because I'm don't think I saw any Western influence names in your presentation. So do you see if there's any kind of uh, maybe religious influences? So maybe biblical names or other Westernized names at all? Yes, I, I, I can. Yeah, I understand that the Hadza are a small community. Uh, and uh, if you read uh, Frank Morrow in his volume on the uh, Hadza is a hunter-gatherer community, He's saying the researchers have an influence on, on, on the Hadza. Uh, and again, he's saying Christianity, 
which helped to build a set, a settlements for the Hadza. And I'm aware that the settlement in Endamaga uh, is typically of, uh, uh, it, has, it was built by a Christian uh, oriented uh, uh, organization. Uh, and, but it is um, unfortunate that um, I didn't put an eye on that. Uh, but I'm not saying, since I did not list names of Western or religious influence, that means they had not penetrated into that, the uh, Hadza. No, no, that, that is not my point. The point of researchers, religion, uh, 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 and I would say Christianity, particularly, uh, and so, but at this point, I cannot recall of a, a typical um, European name which I uh, analyzed in, in my data. Okay, thank you. Um, now I'm going to read out some of the questions I've got in the chat. So the first one is from Martin, and he asks, uh, do Hatsa have names that they only use within the family, so names that are more personal? Uh, uh, Martin Mouse, on whether they have family names. Uh, for me, when I was doing research in 2013-2014, I came to realize that names are when you ask about the names of the Hadza, people may change names depending on who is asking. So, so an individual person may have up to six names depending on the circumstances that the names were listed. listed. And I was happy to, to, to stay with Richard Barlow, who would speak, ask to them their names in, in, in Hadza. And they will ask him, what kind of a name does this researcher want? Because there are names for everything, for each circumstances. So a name of the Hadza, which now underscores that it is an, ident an identity at a given point. And since it is an identity for, at a given point, I assume this will not say with, uh, set, uh, uh, with certain. I assume it will be names which are used within a family. And uh, this is another subject matter which I didn't focus into clearly in my previous survey. But I'm convinced that names for um, you to be used within your family must be there. Because there are names which are used for the governmental documents. There are names which are used in uh, dances, like Bagayu had a name which was coined, Bagayu was coined to him due to uh, 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 his fame, his mentioning his fame in dancing. And so I, I presume that there are indeed names which are used within the family. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I'm gonna move on to the second question, which is from Karani who asked uh, if you have any idea about where the Yedachini Hadza moved to? Yeah, where the Yedachini Hadza moved to? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, uh, uh, the easiest point where they will go will be Mongo Amono. Because now Mongo Amono is assumed to be a typical Hadza village with a dispensary and some help from the government of Tanzania. So most of them will go into, to, to uh, Mongo Amono. And okay. they will also go as far as Endamaka. And um, another nearest point will be um, um, Domanga. So they keep on moving. You know, we had at a single day there was campaign. And there came a lot of people from uh, different points. I, I met one of my informants who was from Mongo Amono, and he would identify himself as an inhabitant of Mongo Amono. So, um, if I would say, where did they go? They have gone to Mongo Amono and Domanga. Okay, then I'm gonna go to the second question also by uh, Karani. Um, and he asked, does that mean that the Hatsa have no naming culture? I cannot say that. That's what I said. 
That's what pushes me to, to say, no, I, the data I analyzed had posed more challenges than the answers to the questions which I obtain now. So, mm, mm, yeah. I don't have detailed information about that. But the borrowing of names from elsewhere is, is obvious. Okay, that probably ties in with his another question by Karani. He asked if taking names from other communities may mean that they have a positive attitude towards those communities. Um, is there any truth to that or further evidence for this? No, no, it's not a positive attitude. It is um, it's kind of, it's kind of a defensive mechanism. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm saying. The identities fluctuate depending on the need at hand. So if you have uh, the warriors like the Maasai and uh, they wish to hide their identity, the Hadza pick a Maasai name when they want to identify themselves with the Maasai. Uh, 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 likewise, when they want to identify themselves with the Hisanzu, which in the literature, I hear they were involved in slave trade at a point. So most of the Hadza people have picked names from the uh, Isans speaking people. And I would not say that is a positive attitude. Rather, I would say that is some form of um, fluctuating identity so as to try to beat these difficult circumstances at a point. They, they want to hide within the bigger community so that the the identities through names should not be an easy target for the um, warrior community like the Maasai or the bigger community like the Sukuma or Nisanzu. So um, I don't think it's a positive identity. Rather, it is a fluctuating identity to, to, to try to fit into the present form of contact. Um. Thank you. I think those are all the questions or comments we have today. I'm just going to give it a brief sec to see if anything else pops up in the chat module. But I don't see anything. So I think um, that's it for today. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page. And entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Um, looking ahead to the next presentation, uh, it's going to be given on Wednesday, January 29th uh, by Puriyam Doe uh, on the Toga Nouns. Um, and with that, I would like to thank Amani again for this very interesting presentation and of course everyone else for participating. And I hope to see you again at our next webinar.